My name is Yasna Guy, and I'm an artist living and working in North Vancouver in beautiful BC. This exhibition um, actually has two parts and therefore has two titles. The very large B piece in Gallery 3 is called Not By Chance Alone. And uh, the second part, which is an extension of the first part, is to do with pollen. And it's called Thistle Rose Gilded Golden Glad to Dorothy Hodges. And uh, that's a phrase from uh, a poet. Her name is Caroline Duffy, and I just thought it was so applicable. Her work is on bees. I became interested in, in bees three years ago, and um, there was, bees were so much in the media at the time. Every week there was something on bee losses, huge bee losses and colony collapse, as it was subsequently called. And, um, you know, I, I had a hard time kind of coming to terms with that or even understanding it. When I started doing some reading on this, I realized that, uh, you know, at the height of summer, a bee colony could have anywhere from 30,000 to 60,000 bees. To me, that was a huge number, it's just inconceivable. You know, so if, so if a hive, if one hive, one colony is, say, 50,000 bees, and a beekeeper in California in trucking his bees loses 2,000 hives, whoa, you know, that's a huge number. You know, how many bees is that? Um, so again, you know, the numbers were just so mind-boggling, and I became mesmerized with this concept of 50, 60,000 bees together. So I, um, I started with the idea that I really wanted to draw 50,000 bees, dead bees. And it was exceedingly time-consuming. It was beautiful, intensive work. But I figured out in order to do 50,000 bees, it was going to take me a good 10 years. So I thought, okay, you know, 10 years working on dead bees is, it just seems so closed. You know, I, I couldn't go anywhere. And, and it actually was getting more and more depressed. <laughs> so two artist friends of mine um, both suggested to me, you know what, you should really try a printmaking technique. And I thought, okay, well, you know, if one, person's tell, one person tells you this, you think, okay, that's probably a good idea. But when another, you hear it from somebody else, you think, okay, this is the way to go. So that's what I did. I, I um, thought I would do relief printing or making little stamps. So when I um, started working on that, that turned out really well. I was very happy with, with it. And then I um, began working on the design itself. And that took quite a bit of time, again, you know, to put things together. I really liked the concept of a bee, kind of a carpet of bees. And I thought, all right, I got about 200 of, you know, stamped bees per sheet. I was already working on the tissue that I'm working, that I'd used for the final project. And um, so I thought, okay, at 200 sheets, that would mean I would need, well, I don't know how many, 300 or 400 sheets in order to make up the 50,000 bees. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's how it, all, how it all began. Then, of course, I started doing more research and reading about bees and um, how we have affected them historically. There's a very, there's a very li uh, rich literature. So I, you know, I kind of researched um, Greek mythology. I, I researched um, antique Ro Ro Roman swags, Baroque flowers, anything that I could use that would help me come up with various um, ideas with w in which I could, which I could use to put together a design. And my first one, my first kind of theme was the symbiosis between flowers and bees. Um, flowers have existed for millions and millions of years, and so have bees, and they've co-evolved. So there are some bees that are specialists for certain kinds of flowers, and there are other bees that are um, generalists. And I'm talking in bees general, not just honeybees, but our native species of bees, whether they're bumblebees or smaller mining bees and um, sweat bees, etc. So they all need they all need uh, flowers, they need nectar and honey, that's their sole source of food. So I thought that um, having that idea, that symbiosis represented somehow was very important. 
I also wanted to give the idea of um, uh, abundance, um, spring um, on the one side. So there's that energy, the life, the swarms, the um, existence. On the other hand, there's also you know, the, the more dark side, the death side, and that comes kind of in various aspects, first of all. You know, bees die naturally. Bees have their own diseases even before we started to influence them. Um, we, of course, have added pesticides and various chemicals and all of the agribusiness that is not very, doesn't have very positive effects on bees or the environment. Also, I made the discovery that um, honeybees and our native bee species are also in competition, and that's another kind of death because. If there isn't enough forage, our native bee species are dying. So altogether, there were aspects of death that seemed to me to be important to include along with the, the, um, the positive, the growth and, and uh, spring, etc. So we have, on the one hand, we have Persephone, and uh, she is represented as the large um, the large figures in the piece, and uh, the various aspects of death are represented by the large skulls. So after I had finished printing, I'd, um, I had a very large tray, actually it's a baking tray <laughs> that I got at a, you know, one of those professional cookware places, and um, I had two hot plates, and uh, I would melt the wax in that, and then I would dip the sheets, literally, you dip them in the melted wax and then you kind of have to lift them up slowly and hold them there until the wax um, drips down entirely and you know the process I mean it doesn't really take that long per sheet you know maybe two or three four minutes per sheet you can literally see it it turns opaque first as it's cooling down and then when you put it aside within two or three minutes it becomes translucent again and it enhances the tonality of the grays and it also becomes even more interestingly translucent yet a little more a little thicker because of the wax and it started it, it reminded me immediately of skin you know and I thought oh this is so gorgeous and the other thing is that it's fragrant it was it's wonderful and again that fragrance reminds me of of bees and flowers, because the fragrance comes from the flowers. It's the flowers that produce it. The, piece on, the pieces on pollen are called um, Thistle Rose, Gilded Golden Glad to Do Dorothy Hodges. And uh, Dorothy Hodges was a, an artist and a beekeeper who worked in the 1950s in the UK. And uh, she wanted to create um, a documentation of tones of the pollen, um, the pollen that honeybees collect. So literally she worked for six years collecting the pollen that her bees had brought back to their hives. She would very carefully and exactingly um, uh, do color samples of the pollen loads that she found. She actually worked with a scientist who taught her how to use a microscope and she did these gorgeous exquisite drawings of pollen grains themselves. I, I knew I had to do something with it. So, you know, my first of all, I started doing her, recreating her color samples into a larger format. So what you see out there is her, is what I base the work on. I've also, uh, part of my project is to go back and I want to collect pollen from each of the plants that, that Dorothy Hodges collected, if I can. She worked in the UK. And also, I'm um, going to, and I am collecting, not going to, but I am collecting pollen from any plant where I see bees foraging, whether they're honeybees or bumblebees or any of the other species, 50 species of native, native bees in BC. Um, I will continue, I am continuing, because the piece that you see in there on pollen is it's just the beginning, literally. It's just the beginning. Um, and I, I wanted to, it, this is this, the pollen is giving me the opportunity to expand and explore that option. I think that uh, this is such a, for me, it's such an exciting thing that I can continue on, that I'm not making a break 
in, in the process, but just absolutely am expanding it. You know, there's this lovely little quote from Samuel Beckett, one of the characters, uh, I, I believe it was from Malloy. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, he says, I've, um, I finally found something in life that I can work on for all of my life and never understand. And I think that describes me and the work. <laughs>